Hey everyone, I have made a series of videos on microservices patterns, from the Saga pattern to Circuit Breaker and back and forth front-end frameworks. But today I am taking a step back. Instead of focusing on advanced patterns, I will dive into the core concept of microservices itself and ask, do you really need them? By the end of this video, you will have a solid understanding of the basics of microservices and whether they fit your needs. Be sure to check out my playlist for more and I guarantee it will be a solid use of your time. Let's start with how applications were traditionally built. In the early days, apps were designed as monoliths, one big piece of code that handled everything, from data storage to business logic to user interfaces. At first, this approach worked for simpler applications. But as systems become more complex, this all-in-one approach started showing its limitations. Imagine trying to fix a small issue in a massive code base. Everything is so tangled together that a small change can break the whole system. To make things easier to manage, developers moved to the multi-tier architecture, where the application was split into layers. The presentation layer handled user interfaces, the logic layer takes care of the business rules, and the data layer stores and retrieves information. While this separation improved things, it was still centralized. All the components were tightly connected, meaning large, complex systems were still hard to evolve and scale. As applications like Amazon and Google grew rapidly, maintaining and scaling these large systems became more difficult. Changes to one part of the system could easily impact everything else, and adding new features slowed down development. And to tackle this complexity, engineers had to rethink the architecture entirely. The solution? Microservices. So instead of building one large application, developers started breaking the application into small, independent services. Each microservice is responsible for handling a single business function, like user authentication, order processing, or payment handling. Each of these services operated independently, has its own database, and can be deployed separately. By splitting the application into smaller microservices, teams can now work on different parts of app in parallel. They can update or scale individual services without worrying about affecting the rest of the system. For example, in an e-commerce app, you could have separate services for managing products, processing payments, and handling shipping. These services communicate with each other using lightweight protocols like HTTP or message queues, but they are still self-contained. And here are the key benefits of moving to microservices. You can scale only the services that need more resources, like scaling the payment processing system during peak hours. Teams can deploy new features or updates to their services without waiting for the entire app to be updated. And if one microservice fails, the rest of the system keeps running, which improves the reliability. Now, while microservices offer a lot of benefits, they also introduce new complexities. Because as an application grows, the number of microservices can still increase to hundreds or even thousands. Managing, monitoring, and debugging all these services become more difficult. If one microservice goes down, it might also affect the others, making it harder to find and fix the root cause. And to manage the complexity of microservices, engineers have created specialized tools. For example, microservices are now often deployed in lightweight containers using tools like Docker. Tools like Kubernetes automate the deployment, scaling, and management of containers. Automation pipeline help deploy new version of services quickly and safely. And message brokers like Kafka or RabbitMQ allow microservices to communicate indirectly and decouple their dependencies. It's important to remember that microservices aren't always necessary. For smaller applications with limited users, a monolithic design might still be the best approach. But for larger, fast-growing systems where features need to be developed and scale independently, like those in e-commerce or banking or even streaming, microservices are often the better choice. Imagine you are developing a local restaurant reservation system. This application might allow users to view available tables, make a reservation, get email confirmation, or check the restaurant's menu and opening hours. This is relatively straightforward application that involves only a few core features. And since the expected user base is limited, perhaps hundreds or thousands of users at most, and the application doesn't have the complexity of handling intricate business logic or significant traffic, a monolithic design would likely be the best fit. And here is why. Because in monolith application, it will have a single code base. All the features, table booking, menu viewing, or confirmation can be encapsulated in one code base. The same database can store reservation information, user details, and restaurant data. With this monolithic architecture, you can deploy the entire application in one go. Since the user base is small, you don't need separate services to handle reservations or restaurant data individually. So instead of investing in the additional infrastructure required to manage several microservices, 
you can deploy everything on a single server or a cloud instance, which cuts down both the infrastructure cost and the complexity of maintaining multiple systems. Now, let's consider what happens as the application grows. Suppose the restaurant expands into a chain with 50 locations across the country, and each location now needs separate reservation management, kitchen inventory tracking, and customer profiles. As the system grows, the application complexity will increase. More customers are booking tables, especially during busy times like weekends and holidays. So there will be expected traffic spikes. The restaurant chain might want to add loyalty program, online ordering, or real-time notifications of table availability. And as the organization expands, different development team might need to work on distinct areas, such as online ordering or marketing campaigns. In this scenario, shifting to microservices architecture would make sense. Because each service, reservation, ordering, customer profiles can be scaled independently based on demand. If the reservation system is heavily using during the weekend, you can scale just that part without affecting the other areas. Teams can update or release new features for a specific microservice without redeploying the entire application. For instance, the online ordering system can be updated separately from the reservation system. Microservices can also improve the resilience of the application. If the inventory management service experiences downtime, the reservation system will continue functioning. In conclusion, microservices help solve the problems that come with managing complex growing applications. They make scaling, deployment, and fault isolation easier, but they also introduce new challenges around management and debugging. With the right tools like Docker, Kubernetes, and messaging queues, you can effectively manage microservices-based systems. If you are interested in learning more about microservices, containers, or cloud architecture, make sure to check out my other videos.